Hello and welcome to the talk Pay to Win Cheap Cross-Chain Bribing Attacks on Proof of Work Cryptocurrencies. My name is Alyosha Yutma, I'm this guy here, and you may remember me from previous talks like systematization of algorithmic incentive manipulation attacks on Proof of Work Cryptocurrencies. As this previous talk, also this talk was a joint work between the same authors listed here. And before starting into the talk, I want to quickly highlight how these two talks and the underlying papers relate to each other. Originally everything started out as one paper which was initially preprinted 2019. This paper uh, basically contained new incentive manipulation attacks and the work for these papers and early discussions started in two Duxtro seminars 2018 and this was also where the group of authors initially joined. As time passed by and the paper grew and grew in size, we recognized that it is necessary to further and further extend the related works section because all the works on incentive manipulation was very fractured. As we passed at some point the page limit of any reasonable conference, we decided to split the paper into two. And therefore there is a systematization paper called Algorithmic Incentive Manipulation Attacks on Permissionless proof of work Currencies, which was basically the subject of the previous talk. And this uh, a paper which covers a new attack there is also another preprint, which is basically the full version of this paper we're discussing right now here in this talk. So expressed pointedly, the research question of this talk could be, what is the most devastating algorithmic incentive manipulation attack possible? Of course, such an attack should be technically feasible today. It should be cheaper than other existing attacks. It should be executable with out-of-band payments and it should be trustless for briber as well as bribees. Here you see some original footage from the Duxtour seminars 2018 where early attacks of how such a tech could be constructed and how such a tech could look like were discussed. So the contribution of this talk as well as the underlying paper is the pay-to-win attack method. It utilizes out-of-band payment and thereby it differentiates between the target cryptocurrency well, where the attack happens, or the effect of the attack happens, and the funding cryptocurrency where the attack is orchestrated and funded. The requirements of this funding cryptocurrency will be discussed later. The attack method itself can be used either for transaction revision attacks, transaction ordering attacks, or transaction exclusion attacks, or all of the three. Um, in this talk, as well as in the underlying paper of this workshop, we will focus on the transaction revision attack, which also uh, Im uh, implicitly includes ordering and exclusion. For the other uh, dedicated ordering and exclusion attacks, I refer you to the full version of this paper on ePrint. So the transaction revision attack we will focus on now is still expensive in absolute numbers. Uh, this is also due to the ex insane exchange rates at the moment, but it is still roughly an order to magnitude cheaper than comparable attacks like the whale attack. Additionally to the attack web method, we also published a proof of concept and all artifacts on GitHub. Uh, and here you can find the link to those. So without further ado, let's uh, directly dive into the description of the attack. For our pay to win attack method, we use the same system or attack model as also used in the algorithmic incentive manipulation systematization of knowledge paper. For a detailed discussion of this system model, I refer you to the previous talk in this session at the workshop on trusted smart contracts in 21, as well as the underlying systematization paper of the previous talk. The key elements of the attack model are that we differentiate between Byzantine miners, and in our case, we describe these attacks with Byzantine miners that don't have any hash rate themselves, but they just have funds that they can spend or utilize to uh, fund algorithmic incentive manipulation attacks. There are also uh, altruistic miners, and we will evaluate the attack with altruistic miners as well. 
And of course, as in all algorithmic incentive manipulation attacks, there are rational miners. And in our attack, we have an explicit victim. This is the victim of the double spend, and this victim uses a security parameter k subscript v, uh, which specifies the number of confirmation blocks he waits until he considers a transaction to be confirmed. Let's start with an overview of the general idea behind the pay to win attack method. Let's assume we have a target cryptocurrency A. Since the attack should be uh, operated with out-of-band payments, we require a funding cryptocurrency B from where the attack is operated and funded. The other requirements for this um, funding cryptocurrency B are that there must exist a way to temporarily verify the consensus rules and state of the target cryptocurrency A. An attacker must have sufficient funds in cryptocurrency B to pay for actions in A. And there must exist a way to uniquely attribute the actions taken in A to accounts that are available in P, B for payouts. If you want to tie this to a more concrete example, let's assume we have target, the target cryptocurrency is Bitcoin and the funding cryptocurrency is Ethereum. So what are the requirements for the Ethereum smart contract to handle this attack? The Ethereum smart contract must allow to temporarily verify the proof of work and the state transitions in Bitcoin. The attacker, of course, must have sufficient funds in Ether to pay for the desired actions, which are Bitcoin blocks in that case. And there must exist a way to map Bitcoin addresses of those desired blocks to Ethereum addresses to handle the payouts. So how is the attack then on a high level operated? The attacker operates the attack by first of all publishing the Ethereum smart contract of course and then specifying so-called block templates for Bitcoin blocks he, des he desires or chains he desires. These blocks as soon as published or block templates as soon as published can then be picked up by miners and mined. And if the reward that is offered for these Bitcoin block templates is higher than what a miner would expect from um, honest mining, the attack has a sh chance to succeed. To verify the intended outcome of the attack, um, the blocks that have been mined and now contain a valid proof of work are then submitted to the smart contract. The smart contract checks the proof of work and checks if the block indeed re resemble the desired state of the attacker and then pays out accordingly. Let's now look at a concrete instantiation of the pay to win attack method in more detail. We again assume that our target cryptocurrency is Bitcoin and our funding cryptocurrency is Ethereum. We further assume that the attacker wants to launch a transaction revision attack, which basically means he wants to perform a double spend um, through bribing without himself having any hash rate. Therefore, he initially uh, deploys a smart contract that then later will be used to facilitate the attack and uh, in the end pay out the bribes or compensations accordingly. This can happen at any time before the actual double spending transaction has been published. This should ensure that uh, potential collaborators and later bribees, um, which are respectively miners capable of uh, performing a proof of work that is valid in Bitcoin, um, can familiarize theirsel themselves with the contract and check if everything is in order. At a later point in time, then, some transaction T is published in the Bitcoin blockchain in a, uh, in a block. This transaction is the transaction that should be double spent. Of course, as in any other double spend, the attacker first has to wait K subscript V confirmation blocks to ensure that the merchant has accepted the transaction T and hands out the goods. At that point, as soon as this happens, the attacker publishes an initialization transaction which actually starts the attack. This initialization transaction contains the, f the block template for a block um, which contains the transaction T prime, which is the transaction that actually performs the double spend. 
Furthermore, this block contains um, a sufficient number of other block templates that should ensure that this chain containing transaction T prime then later actually becomes the longest chain. Note that the attacker has full control of specifying the block content because the block template he published which consist, consists just of the block header and uh, basically the associated Coinbase transaction. So the miners that then should mine these block headers basically are just allowed to change the nonce and the respective fields in the Coinbase transaction, but nothing else of the Merkle root of all transactions. Also note that subsequent blocks here um, cannot yet contain the previous block hash. This previous block hash has then later to be filled by the miners after the first block here in this chain has been submitted to the smart contract. The smart contract then later has to check if all these blocks here um, um, resemble as, uh, as, uh, really a blockchain. Now let's assume that the offered bribes and the attack conditions are attractive enough that miners that are capable of producing valid bit proof of work for Bitcoin that fulfills the difficulty requirement pick up on the attack and join the attack. As soon as the first miner has found a block, he submits the block header and the associated Coinbase to the attack smart contract on Ethereum. The smart contract checks if only the allowed fields have been changed and if the block header or the com or complies to the previously defined block template. If this is the case, the e contract issues an event and every other miner that observes the attack and is potentially interested in joining the attack can immediately update his previous block hash to, uh, to mine on this new first attack chain block. Note that um, the attacker is the one that complete can uh, only submit this block to the Bitcoin network because he is the only one that can complete the block with all other valid transactions. This design decision has the following advantages. First of all, only the block header and the associated Coinbase transaction is required to be submitted to the smart contract, which saves a lot of space. Second, only the attacker knows the concrete list of transaction that is associated with a desired block template and therefore he not discloses his, in his intended actions in the smart contract. This design although requires that the rewards from the Bitcoin coin base of this block are not directly paid to the miners who completed the Bitcoin block templates with the missing proof of work. Instead, the reward from the coin base of this block has to go to the attacker, who is the only one who can complete this block header with the missing list of transactions. And therefore, he needs an incentive to do so and send this completed block to the Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer network. So note that all the block rewards, um, as well as fees and compensations and later bribes, and are paid on the Ethereum funding cryptocurrency. For now, let's assume that the attack is quite successful and miners keep on joining and submitting blocks to the attack contract on Ethereum. The attack chain progresses and suddenly some miner appends also a block to the Bitcoin main chain and the attack would end in a tie. In this situation now, the attacker and owner of the attack contract is able to add further block templates to the attack. This is perfectly valid as long as the attack contract does not provide any means to remove already um, confirmed blocks or funds from the attack but only add funds and block headers to the attack. So now the attacker decides to update the contract with um, yet another block template and the attack therefore can continue. Note that only the attacker uh, knows his total funds and therefore his total length he is able to sustain the attack. And he can basically um, drop supporting the attack at any point in time and not, sub not submit any further block templates. 
So now let's assume the attack in this case is successful and the um, updated block template is mined. What also sticks out here um, from updating the attack with further block templates is that some form of synchrony requirement is needed between the attack chain and the funding chain. So basically to be able to update the Ethereum attack contract with one Bitcoin block template at a time, this would require that after each Bitcoin block there is a guaranteed Ethereum block in between to issue this update transaction. This of course cannot be guaranteed and there is an analysis of this situation in the full version of this paper. It turns out that roughly in an attack that would last 32 Bitcoin blocks, there is a chance for two Bitcoin blocks in a row before any one uh, Ethereum block is mined in between uh, of 53%. Luckily, there is a workaround for this situation, which basically is not just update the attack contract with one new block template, but several block templates. This would also ensure that miners face some form of continuity when they, uh, when they mine on the attack chain and not idle after a block of the attack chain has been found until the next template is published. It turns out the probability in this case decreases rapidly. For example, the chance that, the, that two or that three Bitcoin blocks are found before any one Ethereum block is found in the middle is just 1%. Now let's assume the attack is successful and that no further blocks are appended to the previous Bitcoin main chain. The attack terminates as soon as uh, K subscript B additional blocks have been submitted and mined on top of the last block height for which an attack template has been submitted to the attack smart contract. This K subscript B basically is the confirmation acceptance parameter of the attacker. After this point in time and after the first chain of this length has been submitted to the attack contract, the attack contract terminates and all the miners that have contributed blocks to the attack are eligible to collect their um, their compensations as well as their bribes and funds for the blocks. So for this successful attack now all the blocks um, on the attack chain basically are rewarded with uh, the normalized block reward including fees to one plus an additional bribe epsilon. So each miner then can collect his corresponding uh, rewards. Note that to be able to submit the rewards as well as uh, uh, the bribes to the miners, the miners are required to add their Ethereum um, addresses to the coin base of the Bitcoin blocks they have contributed to the attack. And the smart contract, of course, is required to check if these match. Also note that the miners of the blocks on the main chain that are basically now stale and have been forked away by the attack chain are compensated um, with basically the full Bitcoin block reward including fees. This should ensure that also these miners have the same incentive to join the attack chain and to not to lose basically nothing from this attack or when this attack is successful. Now let's analyze the attack and the payouts in case the attack fails. Again, the, the attack is initialized on the Ethereum chain with a series of uh, Bitcoin block header templates and some miners join the attack and submit blocks to the Ethereum attack contract. But in this case, the Ethereum, uh, the Bitcoin main chain progresses faster than the attack chain. And as soon as the attack chain has basically reached um, its end and all block Bitcoin block header templates have been completed with a proof of work, the main chain is already substantially uh, ahead of the attack chain. In this case now the attacker decides to not update and continue the attack because he deems the 
chances of success too low. And so in this case, the main chain uh, eventually reaches k subscript b confirmation blocks. So this main chain is then submitted to the attack contract and the attack contract terminates. Note that again, uh, the attacker in this case would have potentially be able to sustain the attack even longer, but decided to not continue the attack before that. So um, how do the payouts look in this case? In this case, um, only the miners that contributed blocks to the attack chain are compensated um, with the rewards and fees um, normalized to one in this case and no bribes are paid. Now let's take a quick look at the costs. First of all, let's analyze the case where all miners are rational. This means they follow their short-term profits. We differentiate between three types of costs. The necessary attack budget, which is basically the amount that the attacker has to supply with the attack smart contract on Ethereum to then be later able to pay all uh, pay the compensations as well as rewards and bribes on the Ethereum chain, the cost of a successful attack and the cost of a failed attack. Note that strictly speaking in case of uh, uh, when all miners are assumed to be rational, the attack cannot fail um, if enough funds are submitted to the attack, but nevertheless since these worst case costs are the same for the other case where not miners are rational, not all miners are rational and there are also some altruistic miners, we already look at this case here in this example. So now let's now look at the necessary attack budget, uh, budget in a little bit more detail. The necessary attack budget is determined by the security parameter of the victim. Here a common choice of course in Bitcoin is 6. The total reward including fees of a Bitcoin block. Um, the total number of blocks the attack should be funded. So this needs to be at least 7 within the security parameter of the victim is 6. Um, the, again, times the total reward of a Bitcoin block, including fees, plus uh, the bribe that, need, that is going to be paid per Bitcoin block, plus the operational costs. Filling in some reasonable values here, like for example, one Bitcoin as a bribe, uh, and a security parameter of six, and the current Bitcoin block rewards and average fees, we get a total budget for the tech um, that is 114 Bitcoin, which is at the current exchange rates roughly 5.3 million US dollar. Now let's look at the cost of a successful attack. In case of a successful attack, um, the costs are lower because uh, the attacker gets the rewards of the Bitcoin blocks on the Bitcoin main chain. So under the assumption that, ex that the exchange rate does not fluctuate or change, um, the attacker would basically get the block rewards of the Bitcoin blocks refunded and therefore the total costs of a successful attack are lower and are 57, roughly 57 Bitcoin, which is roughly 2.6 million US dollar. Now let's look in the uh, at the costs of a failed attack. As noted already, in the case where all miners are assumed to be rational, the attack uh, theoretically cannot fail if enough funds are supplied with the attack and, uh, on, 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 and all miners participate. But the cost of a failed attack in this case um, uh, would be basically determined by the costs of a Bitcoin block, which are uh, including fees and the total number of blocks the attack is sustained, um, which in this case would be seven. So the costs of a failed attack in this case of seven blocks that needs to be that need to be compensated in this case are a 58.25 uh, Bitcoin, which is roughly 2.7 million US dollar. Uh, note that these uh, values might seem quite significant on first sight, and they indeed are, but, uh, uh, and you might assume that transactions that are that large only happen rarely, but uh, note that alone in October 2020, there were roughly 60,000 Bitcoin transactions um, with outputs greater than 60 Bitcoins, and you can easily check that on a blockchain. So uh, transactions that are that large do happen. 
Let's now take a quick look at the operational costs. Compared uh, to the costs for compensations and bribes, the operational costs really are insignificant even at current exchange rates. So um, even under the current gas price of 130 gigawatt and the current exchange rate of 1500 US dollar per ether, the operational costs of performing an attack uh, and paying for seven Bitcoin blocks um, are roughly 3,000 US dollar in total and uh, 50 million gas. So since the exchange rate changes quite uh, quite frequently, you can run all these quick cost estimates yourself um, by rerunning the Docker containers on GitHub. Let's now take a quick look at the costs when not all miners are assumed to be rational, but there are some miners that are assumed to be altruistic, which means they follow the protocol rules, even if there would be a strategy that would yield them higher profits. In this case, of course, the success probability of the attack is dependent on the hash rate of the miners that indeed act rational and join the attack, as well as the number of blocks that the attacker is able to fund the attack, which is denoted um, uh, capital N. Note that uh, compared to a lot of previous analyses on the security of Nakamoto consensus and the Bitcoin protocol, we are not interested here in attacks that are running for an infinite amount of time, but we are interested here in attacks that are bounded by this parameter N. Note that, of course, there is a minimum number of blocks which is determined by the security parameter of the, of the victim that the attack needs to be funded and then basically the success probability depends on, the, on these two parameters, hash rate and number of blocks the attacks can be funded. Let's compare the costs of the attack in this scenario with the simulation results from the whale attack paper and the simulated costs of the whale attack for the hash rates given in this paper. We see uh, immediately that the costs of our attack are significantly lower than the costs of the whale attack. This is due to the fact that the whale attack has to compensate the risks for miners that join the attack with higher bribes, while in our case the miners that join the attack face no risks as they get even compensated for the efforts in case the attack uh, fails. Also note that these are the results for the Bitcoin block reward epoch where the Bitcoin block reward was 12.5 Bitcoin and the uh, attack costs are now even lower since the Bitcoin epoch we are currently in only rewards with 6.25 Bitcoin. Let's quickly wrap up this talk with some discussions and direction for future work. In this talk we've seen the pay-to-win attack method for algorithmic incentive manipulation attacks. This attack method was specifically used to incentivize transaction revision, but the same methods can also be used to de-incentivize transaction ordering and exclusion. In this case the attack of course is less powerful, but also cheaper. Um, for a discussion on these instances, I refer you to the full version of this paper on ePrint. Another aspect we have not discussed here is the possibility of crowdfunding such attacks. Since the attacks are operated on the funding cryptocurrency which is capable of smart contracts, there theoretically exists the possibilities that the attacker can be crowdfunded and the burden of funding these attacks can be distributed amongst more than one bribe. Uh, briber, sorry. For a, a quick introduction to this topic, I also refer you to the full version of this paper. Another topic we can just scratch here are possible mitigation strategies. One mitigation that comes to mind is the aspect of cross-chain verifiability. Um, an important requirement for these kinds of attacks is it that the funding cryptocurrency is capable of verifying the, the consensus rules of the target cryptocurrency. So in our case, an Ethereum smart contract must be capable of verifying the proof of work of Bitcoin and also if the chain submitted for, um, is indeed a chain. Um, this means that currently uh, such an attack would not be possible f f with Ethereum as a funding cryptocurrency and Litecoin or edda, any other S-Crypt based cryptocurrency as a target cryptocurrency because it's simply currently not possible to verify S-Crypt in Ethereum smart contracts. Although it has to be noted that such 
protection or such a mechanism cannot guarantee long-lasting protection because then all there needs to be one funding cryptocurrency out there which is able um, to um, fulfill these requirements. Another possible mitigation path are counterattacks. So counterattacks, for example, can also utilize any other form of algorithmic incentive manipulation attacks and are in principle a valid, uh, a valid mitigation strategy. Here, an interesting aspect is the visibility and the coordination of, co of counterattacks and the attacks itself. For example, um, it has long been an argument against the bribing and the incentive manipulation attacks that these attacks are very visible and um, because they relied on in-band payment. In our case, the attack is orchestrated on a funding cryptocurrency which can be completely distinct of the target cryptocurrency. In this case, it can be argued that this attack is more stealthy because a victim would need to monitor all potential funding cryptocurrency to recognize if an attack on his desired cryptocurrency or in his, in his cryptocurrency of interest is currently executed. And there are, of course, all the other arguments and, uh, and directions for future work we've already discussed in uh, the last talk in this session at the workshop on trusted smart contracts in 21, which are the practical practicality of these attacks, are they just of theoretical interest, or will we see such attacks maybe in the future in practice, um, how is rationality defined in this context, and what is the situation in proof of stake and other consensus mechanisms. I want to thank you for now for your. Um, I want to thank you for listening, and uh, if you want to know more, here's the link to the paper. Goodbye.